this epitomizes the issue that college campuses are breeding grounds for this kind of coddling. So much so that President Obama, who is the definition of a liberal, spoke out against this attitude rather famously back in September of 2015 in front of college students. You may have seen this speech on YouTube. He said, sometimes there are folks on college campuses who are liberal and maybe even agree with me on a bunch of issues who sometimes aren't listening to the other side. And that's a problem too. I was just talking to a friend of mine about this. I've heard some college campuses where they don't want to have a guest speaker who is too conservative or they don't want to read a book if it has language that is offensive to African-Americans or somehow sends a demeaning signal towards women. And I got to tell you, I don't agree with that either. I don't agree that you, when you become students at colleges, have to be coddled and protected from different points of view. I think you should be able to, any, anybody who comes to speak to you and you disagree with, you should have an argument with them. But you shouldn't silence them by saying, you can't come because I'm too sensitive to hear what you have to say. That's not the way we learn either. And I agree a thousand percent with President Obama. How are, how are we supposed to learn when we're sheltering students from information, protecting them from things that you know we or they deem to be offensive in these so-called safe spaces? Classrooms are, are, are now safe spaces. The world is what it is. And concealing children and young adults from it isn't going to prepare them you know, for what they have to face. These, these terms, microaggressions and trigger warnings and safe spaces, they're just window dressings that disguise the biggest issue facing teenagers and, and you know, the youth in, in Generation Z. They're entitled, you guys. They're entitled. You people, you people, <laughs> going to start saying that. They're entitled to see the world as they want it, to dictate other people's actions and, and communications. But you know what? It isn't that way. And not everyone's going to conform to these standards of being politically correct, perfectly politically correct. And they have to accept that. And it's just, to me, there's such a, an inherent contradiction because these, cla- these colleges are so focused on diversity, having people of different races and ethnicities and backgrounds and socioeconomic classes on their campus. But intellectually, it's almost like they want to create a hive mind for all people who think exactly the same way. Colleges, including my own, by the way, disinvite speakers because of backlash every year. And it's so confusing because colleges are supposed to be havens for education and intellectual diversity and freedom of thought. And they've become institutions where only one method of thinking is tolerated. And I don't want you to think that I'm slamming the liberal mode of thought because I'm not. You know, this is really a nonpartisan discussion, but most of the people who are disinvited or removed from these campuses are folks who identify as having conservative beliefs that the largely liberal college, you know, populace, the students, the faculty disagree with. But as President Obama said, rather than engage with the speaker or make them question their beliefs or even try to better one's own understanding, the administration and the students feel that by silencing them in the name of PC culture and microaggressions and being offended is the best way to go. To me, that's not free speech and that's certainly not democracy. And the difficulty for faculty and for really all teachers, you know, even even in middle school and high school, is they end up having to teach, their standards for teaching are dramatically altered. They have to teach to the most sensitive person in the class. If you have a class of 100 students and 99 of them won't be offended by a metaphor or, or analogy or a pop culture reference, but one of them might be, you need to teach to their standards. You have to play it safe. You can't risk mentioning anything provocative or scary or risky. And the result is... Everyone's education suffers. Let's say there's a book. President Obama m- mentioned a book, a book that you know uh, that some folks might not be. Look at *To Kill a Mockingbird*, a book that deals with race relations and and um, you know racism and rape and, and and all these these issues that are hugely important for young people to be aware of. That's banned in certain schools, on certain colleges, high schools. Because it's offensive to people. And students are being deprived of this incredible literature. And all these amazing ideas. Because it's not politically correct. And the problem is that when these kids are in insulated environments right now in schools. 
and they're going to leave there and go out into the workplace and struggle to acclimate in the real world. And this isn't something that's going to be, you know, correct itself. It's, it's, it's a mentality that's ingrained in these young people and will subsist 